Time. You remember that play there, Jason Swain? Goodbye, LSU. See ya. Oh, yeah. Never forget it, man. One of the most iconic walk-off uh, moments in Tennessee history. Gerald scores, spikes it. That's when I realized he was left-handed. Uh, did not know that. And uh, we, we went to the house. It was late or early, I guess, when we got back. But that was just a crazy day right there. He joins us now, Gerald Riggs, Jr., VFL, former Tennessee running back, leading rusher that night and game-winning touchdown that you heard right there from the ESPN call. Gerald, we appreciate the, the time. Thanks for joining us. What do you remember about either the end of that game, the game itself where you have the huge comeback, but a huge win in 05 at LSU? Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, it was um... – it was definitely a crazy night, man. A crazy weekend all all in together, you know, just with everything surrounding the game. Uh, Katrina, of course, you know, having to uh, play the game on a Monday night, uh, you know, travel arrangements and just kind of everything, man. It was it was it was a really crazy day, man. That ended up uh, obviously going the way we wanted it. Jer, I didn't know you was left-handed, man. Until that until that night. Um... <laughs> See, a lot of people don't know that, man, because I do I do a lot of different things with both hands. Like I write. I write left-handed and eat left-handed, but I do everything else right-handed. Like I play, I mean, uh, you know, baseball, throw a baseball right-handed, do all that other crazy stuff. So I play golf right-handed, so it's it's, it's 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 weird, man. But yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Any any reason why we never ran a halfback pass with you or Cedric Houston? Any reason? Uh, I could probably I could give you I could give you a lot of excuses, but the main reason why was because we could never complete the damn thing. Uh, <laughs> whenever and then I think the one time we ran it, I think we ran it against Notre Dame uh, that same year, and uh, and I never understood this. And I told Randy, I was like, I'm left-handed, but every time we ran it, they wanted to go to the right with me, and I'm like, dude, I'm left-handed. Why you got me rolling to my right? trying to throw a halfback pass man i'm not you know this isn't normally my deal so i I guess that's why we never ran it that much you gotta flip those hips and flip those shoulders man get those uh get those eyes downfield and let it rip with the left hand going to the right yeah Uh, i could i could could definitely coach it but i can't do it worth a flip (laughs) hey uh gerald that was just an emotional night uh you know rick clausen going back home going back to lsu a place where he had played uh, transfer from we were down you know 21 points I mean it was it was rough man it was rough traveling the same day as you as you as you play uh, what what kind of stands out about uh, everything leading up to the game in the first half uh, well leading up to the game again it was just you know how everything just caught, kept getting switched and you know I know that was that was a big game for us coming up because we had just came off uh, losing to Florida in a close one one that we probably should have won and everybody was just ready to play. Uh, emotions were high as any other big SEC games, uh, as, as, as you are for any other big SEC games. Um, you know, and of course, like I said, the travel, you know, telling us, hey, we're going to travel Friday as normal and play Saturday. And then they switched it to traveling Saturday, playing Sunday, and then switching it again. And then them telling us, hey, look, guys, we're just going to have to get up Monday morning, fly in, go play, fly back. Um, you know, so it was just the emotional roller coaster leading up to the game, I think. Uh, you know, kind of mess with everybody a little bit. And then, you know, obviously the, uh, you know, the fanfare coming into the game, you know, uh, buses getting rocked, um, full beer cans and oranges being thrown at the bus. Um, you know, it, it, it was just it was just a crazy day. But, you know, to get out there and to play, and like I said, that first half was um, couldn't have been any worse. I think, you know, it just took us a while to wake up. And when we finally, you know, got when we finally got ourselves together, man, we were able to string it together and, and, uh, and and slowly make our way back and and be able to win. So it was just it was just you know a crazy day altogether. Just having uh, to deal with the emotional highs and lows of everything. You know, a, a crazy crowd that was ready to explode. You know, like I said, having deal, dealt with Katrina, and you know they were looking for something positive to happen. And I remember you know the first play of the game. Uh, you know, you, I don't know if you guys remember the old college football game before they before they stopped making them, but they used to do the crowd. You could do the crowd noise. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it would shake the screen and, you know, you could barely see the screen and stuff like that. Well, it felt like that in my helmet, like the first two plays of the game, like literally the, 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 the vibrations from all the sound, you know, from all the fans in the stadium, just being uh, super loud, you know, made it, made it really tough. And I just remember laughing uh, at the time. I was like, man, this is crazy. I've never experienced anything like this. 
We're talking to Gerald Riggs Jr., former Tennessee running back, VFL, and talking about that 05 game. So, Gerald, this week Tennessee goes to LSU. It's an earlier kickoff, but those fans will still be, I'm sure, loud enough to try to make it challenging. What, in, in that kind of spot, especially LSU, where it's as tough a place to play in the country, uh, what is key to making sure you, you manage, whether you get up to a good start or not, but you manage for 60 minutes, what the crowd is going to try to do to, to make that environment? Well, it's, 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 it's about, you know, obviously keeping your emotions in check. Um, you know, have, and the great thing about when we, you know, we went into that environment was, you know, all the guys that are on the field playing that in that game had played a lot of football. So we had the experience of being on the road, dealing with hostile environments, dealing with loud crowds. Um, you know, one of the things we did in practice a lot was we practiced with crowd noise and, and, and loud, you know, just loud music and everything around. So it was very hard to communicate. Um you know, but everybody just being on the same page, you know, and, and like I said, being able to manage your emotions and not letting the moment get too big for you um, and just and just honing in on the things that you know how to do. That's how that's how you manage an environment like that. Man, that game was so special for you. Playing against LSU was was a, was a really, really big deal. I mean, uh, you got some connections to Georgia. You got some connections right here in Tennessee. Uh, so you understand when you play against Georgia or you play against, you know, maybe Vanderbilt mm-hmm. or something like that. But you know, playing against LSU, man, that game was different for you. Why? Why was that? Well, a couple reasons. Um, you know, my dad's origin. My dad's side of the family is originally from Louisiana, so um, I remember when I was getting recruited, uh, it pretty much came down to Tennessee and LSU, and Nick Saban was there at the time. And um, you know, I really, I really, you know, kind of fell in love with the idea of playing at LSU and playing for Nick Saban. Um, you know, dealt, developed a great relationship on the recruiting trail. Um, I, I always watched LSU, too, you know, going back to, you know, the Kevin Falk days, um, you know, some of those other, you know, big-name players that played for LSU. Um, you know, Josh Reed was a, was a player that I really enjoyed watching in college. Uh, so it was just – it was one of those places I wanted to play, and for, you know, a lot of different reasons, I decided not to go there and, and, and come to Tennessee instead. But, um, you know, it, it was still – a place that was near and dear to me. So uh, I, I just, it's almost like playing, it's almost like playing against your best friend. You know what I mean? That's on another team. You want to go out and play well. It means a lot to you. You don't ever want them to be able to hang that over your head to say that they beat you. Um, and then, you know, of course we were, like I said, we we're coming off a loss to Florida. Um, you know, a game that I would have probably liked to have a little bit more involvement in, but, you know, I wanted to show that, uh, you know, that I was the guy and that, you know, everybody that people had that, that believed that I was the guy uh, their their belief was in the right place. So I just wanted to go out and play well. Joe Riggs, Jr., VFL, former uh, Tennessee running back here on Josh and Swain. Uh, Florida game week, you were here. You were on the sideline, and you are on the field uh, celebrating uh, that win over Florida. And then I don't know how you snuck into the locker room, man, but you was in the locker room <laughs> celebrating with the team, Joe. What, what was that all about, man? How, how, how cool was that? Uh, well, it was cool, man, just to be back in the locker room, you know, again. Uh, seeing those guys celebrate. I mean, I wish they let us celebrate like that, like like that back then. I don't think they could have uh, cut us loose like that uh, with the crew that we had. But uh, you know, it was just good to be, uh, you know, around the program. Um, you know, and obviously in a big win like that, it's been a while since we've gotten a big win like that at home. Um, probably since what 2016 Georgia, I think. Since uh, we had a big a big win at home, so it was just good to be, be to be around the guys. Um, you know. Tennessee always treats, you know, myself and, you know, guys like you and and, and several other guys really well. So whenever I come back, get a chance to, uh, you know, be in the stadium for a game, you know, kind of get the chance to, you know, go around and 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 be um, be around the team and and uh, enjoy the game. It's hard for me to sit in the stands, to be honest with you, because I just I get too much into the game, and it's it's just really hard for me to just to sit in the stands, especially when people want to talk to you and ask you about this and ask about I'm like, look, man, no disrespect, but I just want to watch the game. You know what I mean? I just want to get into the game, uh, you know, and be left alone. So, you know, that's why I, I like to get down there on the field, man, and just be close to the action. Gerald Riggs, Jr., former Tennessee running back. And, uh, Gerald, you mentioned your recruiting days. You were a five-star, one of the most sought-after running backs in the country when you were in your class. Uh, fast forward 20 years. If you're a recruit right now, what do you think of Tennessee's offense? What are you seeing with Tennessee's offense if, if you're a running back being recruited by Josh Heupel? Um, well, I, I definitely see that there's opportunity, you know, and, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, on the field when you're, you know, from the offense that they run, 
uh, you know, and, and, and the way that their, their tempo goes, it, it opens up, it creates a lot of lanes for you. Uh, it, it gives you a lot of opportunities for big plays. And, um, you know, if you're a guy that has the speed and, and, and has the ability to break tackles and, and, uh, and take, take runs of distance, man, it's a, it's a, it's a very intriguing offense to look at. You know, it's, it's, um, it, it's one of those that you say, Hey man, I, if, if, you know, if I got a chance to go there and, and, and get into the mix and get in early, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely one you can't uh, can't look away from. Joe, we got two young backs on our squad. One, Dylan Sampson, who will be going back home, basically, playing against LSU. He's from the state. Uh, and then uh, you got Justin uh, Williams-Thomas. Go back to your, your freshman year playing running back and think about what it was going to take for you to get on that field early. What do you mm-hmm. think that these young guys will have to do uh, to get more reps, more opportunities in the game to go out there uh, and play? Uh, well, they, well, for one, they've just got to gain the confidence uh, of, of the staff and the guys around them. You know, I know, I remember, you know, when I was a young guy, the, the biggest thing was they just had to be able to trust you in the game to be able to do the things that you needed to do to help the team win. And, uh, you know, whether that was uh, make the right read, obviously, uh, you know, identify in protection and be able to pick up, uh, you know, the blitz and protection and be able to pick up the right guy. Uh, and, and, ju- and just be, you know, just be dependable. You know, hold on to the football, um, make the plays you're supposed to make, and every now and then, you know, do something special. I mean, it's it's, it's not really rocket science. You just got to go out there and do the things that you've always done, the things that got you recruited, uh, to go out there and be able to do them, you know, and, and like I said, gain the confidence of, uh, of the coaches and gain the confidence of your teammates. I remember, um, you know, Casey was really great. Um, you know, he was the older guy, obviously, the other statesman. You know, he, he, he believed in me a lot. So when I did get in the game, even when I did, you know, have moments where I was, like, unsure about things, he would just, you know, he'd look over to me and he'd be like, hey, man, you got this, or hey, remind me of something, you know, because he knew I had the ability to go out there and make plays and, and, and get the job done when uh, when asked. So, you know, it was it was kind of – it's just one of those deals where you just got to show people that you can live up to, you know, the hype, so to speak, and, and that, you're, uh, that you're, you're worthy of going out and, and, and doing the job. Hey, Gerald, before you go, as a former player at Tennessee and you played at Tennessee when you're competing for championships and you know what's happened since then in between, uh, how much mm-hmm. have you wanted to see Tennessee back in this position, winning games like you're talking about celebrating a couple weeks ago over Florida and, and being in top 10, top 25 matchups like they are right now? Well, you know, it's, I mean, obviously with the, you know, with the ties to the school, I mean, you always want to see your, 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 uh, you know, your former school and, you know, get get back into the mix and everything. And quite honestly, I'm just tired of hearing all of my buddies that went to Georgia or went to, you know, LSU over the last couple of years, man. They're like, hey, when you guys going to get back into the mix? You know what I mean? So I'm just tired of hearing their mouth about uh, about kind of being, you know, on the outside looking in. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great, you know, for the program. It's great to see the fans. You know, one of the best – one of the big things about – being at the Florida game last week was just the atmosphere around the game. Um, it, it, it felt like some of those games that, you know, some of those weekends that we played and obviously, you know, we weren't around the fans and whatnot, you know, as players, but just the feeling that, Hey, we we're confident going into this game, you know, whether it's a big game, it doesn't matter who we're going into play, just the confidence that, that when we're going into this game, we, we we're going to be real surprised if we don't win. And, and, you know, and everybody having the belief that, Hey, all we got to do is what, you know, what we're coached to do and what we're capable of doing, and we can go out and win the football game. It, it feels good to be able to have that feeling again. And hopefully uh, the team can continue on the pace that they're on and, 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 you know, be able to build on that. Hey, who would have had the better NIL deal as teammates, Gerald Riggs Jr. or Jason Swain? <laughs> oh, I would, of course. Okay. I would, of course. Swain? I mean, he was a Heisman Trophy candidate at the beginning of the season. I mean, I have no comeback to that. <laughs> okay. I mean, who would have had more swag, though? I mean, that's an easy, oh. that's an easy answer. But Gerald would have had more opportunities. Well, I mean, that's, 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 that's easy for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get to stand out there, you know, look pretty, you know, throw, throw an occasional block here and there. You know, occasional? Maybe, maybe cut, maybe, you know, cut blocks for mostly. But, you know, hey, they get out there, throw a block or two, catch some balls. You know, they get to look good. Their jersey stays clean. You know, you know how it goes. Fix those wristbands, Gerald. That's that's the focus. Occasional there in blocking plays. on the outside. Huh. <laughs> huh. The thousand yard rusher. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> now those guys look. No, on, on the real though, man. Those guys. They, you know, me, Swain. Uh, let's see, Brent Smith. 
um, you know, CJ Faden, like all those guys, man, they, 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 they did their job. I mean, I couldn't, you, you could, you know, we could joke as much as we want to, but you know, they, we can always, we can go back and look and look at the film. Um, you know, big plays happen in the run game because of the blocking on the outside. You know what I mean? So, you know, those guys, and, and obviously because of the big plays that they made, you know, catching the ball as well, you know, that opened up a lot for us, um, you know, in, in the, in the previous year where, you know, said both Cedric and I both went over a thousand yards, um, you know, that year, you know, they were making some big plays. So it was, it, it was, it was great to have those guys on the field, man. But yeah, every, every now and then you got to give them a little something because they, you know, they, they made, those, they made those cut blocks look real good. Absolutely. Yeah, clean it up. Clean it up, Gerald. Good job. Good job, Gerald. Good job cleaning it up. Sound, you sound just like a coach. <laughs> Gerald Riggs Jr., former Tennessee running back, VFL. Gerald, great to have you on the show. Thanks for spending some time to relive some memories down there in Baton Rouge. We'll see what happens this Saturday. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks. Thank you guys for having me on.